Hi everybody, I'm Violet Oon. Hi everyone, I'm Gerald Tan. I'm the cooker and he's the shooter. <laughs> okay, normally uh, Gerald, Gerald actually shoots uh, during this COVID-19. As, as a service, he shoots hawkers for free so that they can actually promote their food. But now we're going to do a Peranakan dish. I think you do cook at home as well, right? Yes, I do. So I'm going to start. Now this is called chicken tempura and it's a blend of Malay and Chinese cooking which is what our culture is about. And then I'm going to start off by turning on the fire. I have about four tablespoons of uh, oil, cooking oil. Mm -hmm. Then I will, if chilies, it's about four or five chilies, 60 grams. So you just cut it roughly like that. I'm doing all this because I need the oil to get hot. So you have to be patient, okay? And then you want to try to cut the green chilli? Can. Like that. A bit diagonal. Okay. How many yeah. should I cut? Just cut for fun. A bit, a bit cannot, that's, that's not... This is not straight, right? No, cannot be straight. Like that, like Yeah, like straight, that. straight. Uh, like all that. the way, yeah, straight. No, straight down. No, just straight, but the, the thing is on a diagonal, okay? Oh, okay, like ah, that. Okay. So this is very Chinese. You never cut something straight. You have to Fair do it diagonal. Okay. okay. So now we have onion, you know? This is about 150 grams onion. It's Bombay onion, the, the red onion. Mm -hmm. So I'm now going to put the oil in. About three to four tablespoons. It depends how much you want. Mm -hmm. I'm going to wait till the oil gets really hot. Because if you don't have enough oil, mm -hmm. the food is just sort of boiling on its own juice. It doesn't have that frying effect. Okay. So I'm waiting for it. Now, in the I, when I used to teach cooking, I'll tell people you have to wait till the oil is dancing. It actually dances at the bottom. I also have limes. Uh, this is like, we call it limau kasturi, mm -hmm. right? And normally you cut it into half and I tell you how to squeeze it out. Mm -hmm. We have two teaspoons, mm -hmm. a little bit of salt, in case it's not salty enough, about three tablespoons of uh, dark soy sauce normal, and then four and a half tablespoons of sugar. Okay. It's sweet, sour, salty and yummy. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I think it's nearly done. So you can chit chat in between. So in other words, you can actually uh, call your friends. <laughs> you want to try? No. Why don't you try now? Okay. Yeah. You don't, no, you can come and fry here. Okay. Your, your shoulder is not good enough. Uh -huh. It must be like playing tennis. You cook from the shoulder, not from the wrist. Oh, so, okay. So uh -huh. I don't, I, my wrist don't move? No, yeah, your shoulder. My shoulder move. Yeah, so it's like playing tennis. Like that. Yeah, I must have strength. Okay, very good practice. Okay, then you flip it. I'm not a hawker. I mean, and I don't know how to... I don't have the strength to go and throw the wok. Do you have um, the strength? No. Okay. So, you know, so you just use two ladles like this. Okay. And then let it keep on frying till it's really, really a uh, nice colour. Mm -hmm. And it sizzles. You can hear the sound, right? Yep. If there's no sound, that means it's wrong. Okay. Then I'm going to put in the chilies, red and green. Can I have the green chilies? Yeah, it's about... 60 grams each, which is about three or four chilies. Okay, so you know how to cut it now, right? Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to fry it till I'm going to take a bit out for uh, some garnish. So I'm going to have it a nice colour first. Excellent. It's not it's not a Chinese hawker style, it's not hay wok. Mm -hmm. It's quite a, like a bit European style, where it's slow cooking, right? Okay, so I'm going to take, now it looks quite sort of, cooked a bit, I'm going to take out for some for garnish on top. And this is uh, important. And you know we love this uh, colour of red, green and the onion. Mm -hmm. National day, right? Without the green. If it's national day, just use red chilies. Okay? <laughs> yes, you can do that. Okay, at this point, you have a nice, the sizzle gets louder, it's very nice. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to put in the chicken. It's about, I've used a whole chicken and I'm using 500 grams. So I have a leg, a thigh, a breast and a wing as well. Mm -hmm. So it's about half a chicken. I can double it. I can use more. But this is a nice sort of two people at home to eat with other dishes. So I'm going to fry it a bit. It's lightly coloured. Now I'm going to put the soy sauce, about three tablespoons. This is a bit more than three. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to put about three tablespoons. And you use measuring spoon actually. This is the actual tablespoon, okay? And teaspoon. Now I will put the water, one cup, about three quarter of a cup. I'm going to put it in. Then I'm going to keep on frying it. You see, I think it comes to the boil. And then I'm putting the sugar. That's it. That's about four and a half tablespoons. But I'm not going to put all because in case it's too much, then... At the end, I'm going to taste it and see how it tastes like. So, and let it um, keep on simmering. The, if you want to braise a chicken or meat, the liquid should cover three quarters. 
true. Okay. Don't cover all the way. Because if you cover all the way, the meat will sweat. And then you're making a soup. And you cannot thicken the sauce. So I want to thicken the sauce. I don't want the meat to sweat, right? Mm -hmm. And it has to be slightly darker. So I'm going to leave it for about 10 to 15 minutes. Depends mm -hmm. how cooked you want it. By 12 minutes, it should be cooked. And then I have to turn it now and then. So I'm covering three quarters away, okay? Mm. And I'm going to leave it. So what does cooking mean to you? Actually, I hated cooking class in school. Mm. Then when I was about 16, after living in England, and I miss our food so much, and I realised that if I wasn't going to learn to cook it, if my aunts get old, and I'm not going to be able to taste its food again. So I decided to learn to cook so that that heritage won't be lost. Mm. And I think every Singaporean should learn to cook from their parents, their grandparents because otherwise it's going to be lost. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that's how I started. So it became a passion. I became a food writer. And what it means, I think now, to Singaporeans, even like you, mm -hmm. like you, you're, you're not only taking pictures, you're cooking, right? A little bit, yes. During this uh, sacred breaker, I think everybody in Singapore is a master chef, have you realised? Yes. <laughs> so what have you been cooking during a circuit breaker? Very simple stuff, actually, because uh, I've been helping, right? Um, so I, I've cooked a little bit, um, all like, pasta and basically simple stuff that don't really require a lot of ingredients so that's what my go-to yeah, yeah but you do cook lah yeah I do uh, are you cooking more during this time a little bit more yeah, yeah. so I, I think it's very lovely for family togetherness i find families are cooking together they're eating together which has given us a time to pause and spend time with each other mm -hmm. uh, i think that's the that's the benefit of this time a lot of people are sort of thinking of society or, or community and helping and that's what you've been doing right mm -hmm. Yeah, can you tell us about what you do? I think uh, what I did uh, most recently was more like a personal project uh, yeah. where to help the local FMB, the hawkers, la, especially during the circuit breaker yeah. period. Yeah. Um, like I did that because um, a lot of times where, you know, as an FMB owner, you know that you have to get the ingredients weeks beforehand. So I guess like for these hawkers, um, during the circuit breaker, right, they already have all these ingredients, but it was implemented suddenly. Yeah. So that was where I decided to t like, you know, since uh, I haven't done a lot of like FMB stuff, and I decided like, why not I give it a try and help these guys with what I can. Like. So you're doing it like uh, pro bono? Yes. That's lovely. I mean, we don't buy our food weeks in advance, mm -hmm. but we do have it in the fridge. Yes. And then what happens is that what do they do, right? And then, you know, they can't feed. I think mm -hmm. that was a bit, was it? exciting for the hawkers to have their pictures taken? I think for a majority of them, yes. Yeah. Uh, I mean, because they have never uh, really get the photos taken professionally before. Yeah. So I guess that's like a eye-opening like, experience for them as well. Was it eye-opening for you too? Uh, yes, because uh, a lot of times they send, they have to send the food to my place, right? Because no, no photo taking allowed outside. Yeah. So I become the the chef, like, I become the one plating everything. Okay. Yeah. So that I think that's uh, something that I really learned um, during this whole um, phase one and circuit breaker period. During your time, mm. during this time as well. Yeah. So it gave you the time to pause and learn something different, right? Yes, definitely. Yeah. So I I think um, the food in Singapore is I think we find so important to us, mm -hmm. um, not only to eat, but I feel that. In, in this world that's so divisive, yep. it's very inclusive in Singapore. People eat together in, in food centres mm. uh, of different uh, cultural backgrounds. And you know, the food comes from different cultural backgrounds. And I always say that Singapore food provides the ties that bind. Mm. And that's so important now, right? Yep. Yeah. So how does this dish represent Singapore? I selected it because sim first it's simple. Mm. So it represents Singapore lifestyle where people don't have so much time. Secondly, it's Pranakan. But it's a blend of our Chinese and Malay cultures, which is what we are as Peranakans. So the soy sauce is Chinese. Then the whole idea of chilies cooked this way uh, is very uh, Malay to a certain extent, very simple with onions. And then with the lime. So it's a very um, local taste with that sour, sweet, salty mm. taste at the end. Okay. So, so all the ingredients represent different culture? La. No, they no, not really. The soy sauce is Chinese. Okay. And then the way of cooking, you know, with the chilies and uh, onions is very simple Malay home cooking. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and they also have uh, masak ketchup, which they use, you know, uh, like dishes. Mm -hmm. Which, but the ketchup is from China, for example. Ah. So it's a it's a blend of cultures. It's very multicultural, mm -hmm. which I think is what represents Singapore to a great extent. So now I'm going to get you to taste it. We keep on boiling for about 15 minutes. Now you see that the sauce has thickened, and now you know that it's really done because the sauce is become thick and gluey. Have a taste. How is it? It's very sweet at the start. Yeah. And then the spice kick in at the end. Yeah, that's part of the magic of it, right? It's very interesting. Yeah? It's interesting, right? Then, I will then add the lime juice. And for me, I like it very sweet. In a way, it's like um, old-fashioned peranakan, but some people don't like. 
So it's about two teaspoons of lime juice. Okay. And I put it at the end because I want the lime to be fresh. I don't want it cooked because it's a different taste when it's cooked. Uh, we have to be very careful. You have to have a sieve. Okay, so and then Gerald, since you did food photography, you can do the honors of plating this dish. Okay. And then garnishing it. So this is the plate. You can you should show the leg on top and the leg and the top, wing. Right? Yep. No, so, so these are the breasts, the thigh. You can put it first. At the bottom, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Would you like a pair of chopsticks to control? Uh, try it. For me, I have a very sweet tooth. I would have added more sugar. You know what I'm saying, that? Mm -hmm. So some salt. So this is good for you, right? Yeah, just I think that's quite nice. Okay. And then we can clean it a bit on top. Just you know, put it on the top. You can have some more sauce. People were not very wealthy, mm. and you know, meat was not sort of so available. Mm -hmm. So you have a lot of sauce to go with the rice. Okay, and you may like to garnish it. On the top. Yeah, I mean something's nice. Yeah, normally on the top, like a mountain. When you cook, uh, the green chili has a different taste, which is very nice. Mm -hmm. uh, sort of younger taste. So you have to cook with both chilies. Okay, just crown it nicely. Yeah. Okay. And then. So that's nice, right? Yeah, it looks very good. And now you can take the picture. So this is Gerald doing his wonderful pro bono job. <laughs> Gerald has been doing this for hawkers for the last one and a half months, right? Gerald, in this time, in this last few months, is there other people that you're grateful to? Well, I think uh, my, answer to, my answer to you would be um, quite standard. Lah. Um, to me, um, because I've been home the whole time and my family has been home, um, the, the one person that I'm really thankful and grateful for is actually my mom. Um, because like this, during this whole um, journey where I've been helping the hawkers, right, she's been there giving me like, the tips because like, she, I cook a little, but I think she's, she's a lot more experienced than me and that's where she kind of gives like, the tips whether I'm doing it right, whether like, the coriander is supposed to be on top, coriander is supposed to be at the side and things like that. Whenever after the shoot, when I get like, really tired, she'll be there to help me um, even though like, she didn't have to and it was my own initiative. And so, so all in all, I'm really very thankful for the time like, we can spend together. Like, and that's the, because my mom always worked, so she's really at home. So this is the time where I feel that we kind of bonded over a personal project. And, and with that, I learned a lot more uh, about her as well. Like. Yeah, so what about yourself? Well, I'm, I'm very grateful for this personal time that we've had in the last few months mm -hmm. where uh, you know you can reflect and um, even though during this terrible time, I mean, you're close to your family, even though we have like a birthday party on a video call, it's so warm yes. because you know it's so different a time, right? You are sort of fighting something together. Mm -hmm. um, but is there anybody that you would like to thank? I think I think it has to be my, I mean, my whole family la. Yeah. Bit, yeah, right? I mean they are, they are consistently there and like we like even when the hawkers they send all yeah. the plates and the food, I'm messing up the entire kitchen yeah. and, and like my room is full of the plates, right? It just looks like a mess okay. entirely. Yeah. But they didn't say a thing about it. Uh, so I think They were very supportive. Yeah, you know, very supportive, very understanding about what I'm trying to do. Uh, so I think yeah, my, I think to thank really is my whole family. I'm really thankful for la. Yeah la. So what are you what are, what are you like thankful for during this period as well? Well, at my age, <laughs> you get a bit more uh, wider view, right? Mm -hmm. And I would really like to thank our frontline workers, not only our nurses, our doctors, but really the people considered essential. You know, like the janitors, uh, the people who clean up, and and they're doing it at the risk of their own health which is what I'm very grateful for. So Violet, what are your hopes and wishes this year for Singapore? Well, this year for Singapore has been very tough, has been very tough for everybody around the world. It will continue to be tough. But I think what is so amazing is the wonderful community spirit that's emerged. That when people are in need, there's a whole lot of people helping out, delivering, cooking. And this spirit has not been seen a long time. You know, and, and I do hope for Singapore that it will continue like this for the rest of the year and beyond. What about you, Gerald? Yeah, I have to agree with you uh, very strongly that like this year, especially our community spirit is really strong. And um, I think my hopes and dreams for Singapore this year is that every business will help one another and moving forward, we'll move together as one Singapore. So yeah, that's really my hope and wishes for... Yeah, that's, that's what we do hope, right? I think, Gerald, we've enjoyed cooking this ayam tempura. We hope you enjoyed looking at it. And there are actually many more dishes that are being created for to celebrate National Day in this ebook that you can enjoy. Many other chefs, home chefs and famous chefs. And together we'd like to say Happy, Happy Birthday, Birthday Singapore! Singapore.